If you're looking for the 2013 32-inch MacBook Pro in 2023 or now going into 2024, you're probably looking for a laptop that's good for web browsing and getting some basic work done. So I'm going to go over the design, the performance, what step above gets you, what step below gets you, as well as the battery life, what the software support will be like, and I'll let you make the decision at the end if this laptop is right for you. So starting off the design, this MacBook is known for its high resolution retina display, which is basically Apple's fancy term uh, for a high resolution display. So if you don't know what that looks like, basically take like the screen of an iPad, for example, and put it on a laptop. And that's basically the screen resolution of this laptop that you're looking at. Now, another thing I want to mention too about this retina display is the anti-reflective cone on it has a history of wearing off on a lot of these laptops that I've seen. So if you are buying these used, make sure it's not severe at least. If it has a little bit of it, it's going to be fine. But if there's like inches where it's worn off and it looks absolutely disgusting, maybe avoid it or try to really talk down the price. So moving on to some other things about the design, the keyboard on this is really comfortable to type on. It still uses Apple's scissor switch mechanism, so you don't get the issues that are common with the newer like 2016, 2017 uh, MacBook Pros. And then the trackpad is an actual physical click trackpad. So when you push down it, it actually physically clicks. It doesn't give you like a fake vibration. Some people like it, some people don't. Honestly, for me though, I don't care. And then for ports on the left side, you have your MagSafe charging port. You have two Thunderbolt 2 ports. You have a USB port, a headphone jack. And then on the other side, the right side, you have a, another USB port. You have an HDMI and then you have a SD card slot. I mean, after performance, this is basically a conclusion of a performance test I did in our video. I'll leave that link in the description. Uh, but basically, this laptop does a really good job at doing web works like in Google Docs, uh, playing videos, you know, accessing online courses, and uh, the built-in applications on it run really well as well. Uh, however, this laptop is not really good for things like, you know, photo editing, uh, video editing, um, and even, you know, playing basic games like Minecraft. In terms of gaming, I did do a Minecraft test on this. It got like between 15 to 30 frames per second. I don't really consider that playable in my opinion. Now I know there's signs you can change to improve that, uh, but still it's not gonna be super great. In terms of battery life, Apple advertises this laptop with nine hours of like wireless web. However, because batteries do age, like this MacBook for example, only holds 77% of its original capacity, uh, it's honestly not gonna get that much battery life. Uh, realistically, you're probably going to get like seven to eight hours of battery life, which, you know, is just enough to almost get you through the day. But if you are heading off to work and stuff, you're going to have to make sure, you know, this is charged up and I have a charger with you. Uh, but I wouldn't consider it something that will like, you'll bring around with you and it'll last you a full day. It's not quite uh, that good. Now, there is an application too you can use to check the battery health on this. It's called Coconut Battery. I just search it up in the web browser, download it and you can check the battery within a few minutes. Now, one of the concerns with a laptop this old is how well does it handle with software support? So this laptop can go up to macOS Big Sur, which is about a few years old now. However, it still gets security updates and most applications you're gonna download off the web, like Google Chrome, for example, are still gonna work on this thing for at least a few more years. Now, one thing I will mention though, is if you do plan on downloading apps off the App Store, or you're planning on using a Microsoft 365 subscription uh, for like Microsoft Office and you know those types of apps, or like the Adobe suite of apps, you are gonna need a newer MacBook, like a 2017 or newer MacBook in order to run those applications. You're probably wondering by now, who is this laptop for? Well, it's what I like to call a house computer, where basically, you know, it's gonna be mainly used at home, uh, mainly for things like browsing the web, you know, using Google Docs and some like online applications. Uh, however, if you are going to be using this as like a serious work computer, you know, for things like the Microsoft suite of apps and uh, things like video editing, photo editing, I recommend also looking at a newer computer. Now, another thing with this too is it's kind of in the price range of a Chromebook. So if you are in the market for like a Chromebook or something for your kids or a grandparent, I would highly recommend to consider buying this instead. I mean, if the build quality of this thing, the Luna build, the uh, high resolution screen, it really holds up well. 
and a lot of Chromebooks I see in that $200 range, they're made very cheaply, they have very little RAM, a very bad processor, and you might as well just get them a used MacBook instead. So if you're wondering what a step up from this is going to be, it's going to be the 2015 MacBook Pro. So that's about uh, $250 to $300 instead of like $200. Now the 2015s can go up to macOS Monterey, and they do have like one of those haptic trackpads if you like that. However, um, it's going to be about the same usability wise. But I would recommend if you do have like a 2015 MacBook Pro for sale in your area to get that instead of this just because it's a little bit newer. And then for the step below, you'd probably be looking at the 2012 Unibody MacBook Pro. So that's really good still for web browsing and it's really good for like, you know, again, laying around your house. However, if you are going to be using that for more than a few times a week, I just highly recommend getting this laptop. Uh, it has a much better screen, a much better design, and you might as well just get this instead for a little bit extra if you do plan on using it for more than a few times a week. So now that I have an understanding about the 2013 13-inch MacBook Pro, I'll let you make the decision if it's right for you. And if you need more time to think on it, I do have another video that's a performance test if you want to check that out. And uh, thank you for watching and good luck on your computer journey.